Good morning, grace and peace to you this Lord's Day and welcome to worship. My name is Kim Adams and I am the pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Valparaiso, Indiana. As you will see, my surroundings look a little different this week. I have been in Montreat, North Carolina for the Presbyterian Association of Musicians Board of Directors meeting. It's been a meaningful week with half the board joining us online while the other half of us sits six feet apart wearing masks and also sitting at six foot long tables. We've gotten a lot of work done and are very excited about the upcoming 2021 year and all that it has in store. If you are interested in learning more about the Presbyterian Association of Musicians, and what we are about, feel free to reach out to myself or check out the website, presbymusic.org. Small prayer groups have begun meeting in the pavilion once a month. If you'd like to join a group, please contact the church office 
so we can get you set up with a group. We are limiting each, each meeting, each group meeting to 10 members. But the good news is that once a group is full, we have plenty of folks who have volunteered to lead a new small prayer group. So this is a great opportunity for First Presbyterian Church to stay connected and of course pray together. Physical distancing and masks are required. Many people are returning back to school in the coming days. If you are returning back to school as a teacher, administrator, professor, staff person, or even a bus driver, we will be offering a back to school blessing during our worship hour today. In addition, we will also be offering a drive through blessing this afternoon from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. at First Presbyterian Church Valparaiso in the portico. So, this is open to all members, friends, and the community. Grab your mask, hop into your car, and head on over to the church building and drive up to the portico to receive a blessing. Hope you can join us online Wednesday evening for our midweek reflection with Luann Carabell as she completes the series on overcoming fear. For more information really on this and all other ministry opportunities, including story time and youth group, please be sure to look at your bulletin. Please take note that for our prayer for illumination this morning, we will be singing a song called Listen to the Word That God Has Spoken. Ann Carlson will be playing it one time through on the piano. And then you will hear my family and I singing it twice through and then four times through as a round. It shouldn't be too hard to catch on. I'm sure you will sing with great energy and joy. Last but certainly not least, please join me in expressing gratitude for today's worship leadership. That would be Ann Carlson, Harry Carabell, Kim and Mike Crorkin, Jean Patton, Ken Cruz, Ken McAloon, Brad and Joy Dirks, as well as Jerry Cars. Now I invite you to join me in the call to worship. Children of God, come to the waters. We gather to be restored and renewed. Come with your faith and your doubt. We respond to the one who claims and calls us. Come, Christ summons us to draw near. Let us worship God with joy and thanksgiving.
folks, is a wrap. When we pass through deep waters or go through times of fiery trial, the Lord our God is with us. With confidence in God, our Creator and Redeemer, let us confess our sins. Lord, we long to draw close to you, but we are afraid. We are afraid to hear your summons, for we do not know what awaits us when we step out in faith. We are wary of taking risks for your sake because the forces of chaos seem stronger than your assurances to us. We worry that we will not have enough faith in you or in the gifts you've given us to do the things you ask. Forgive us, Lord, and save us. Reach out your hand and lift us from our fear that we might follow you faithfully. Let's lift our prayers to the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, because we have been submerged in these baptismal waters with Jesus, we too will rise to new life in Christ. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. And now, having shared a sign of forgiveness and reconciliation with God through Christ, let us share a sign of wholeness with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, friends. Ken Cruz here. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. That's right. Me and Owen are out here on Spectacle Lake today. We got inspired because Pastor Ken is going to be talking today about a time that Jesus' disciples were out on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus came walking out to them. And of course, they were a little frightened to see that. The waters had become rough and they were afraid to be out on the sea to begin with. And when they saw Jesus, they said, it's a ghost. Well, let's think through that a little bit. Why would they say it's a ghost when they see Jesus? Well, if we understand that the early people who lived with Jesus and how they understood the sea, they thought that the sea was a place of spirits and chaos. So it was kind of frightening to be out on the sea, even though they were fishermen and fisherwomen who were really familiar with being out on the waters it still was a kind of scary place for them to be. And so when they saw Jesus walking on the water towards them, they thought it must be a spirit because we're out on the sea and the sea is being angry right now. But Jesus assures them, it is I. And Peter says, if it's really you, command me to come to you. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He invites Peter to walk out onto the stormy seas. Now sometimes in life we might feel like we're walking or rowing through stormy seas. Perhaps we uh, have a scary thing happening at school or in the world around us and we get a little bit afraid. What's interesting is Jesus doesn't say, turn away from the scary thing. He invites Peter to walk right into the scary thing. And God and Jesus invite us to walk into the midst and walk through the midst of scary things, knowing that if we keep our focus on Jesus, we will walk right through the scary stuff into a hopeful future with Jesus Christ. So the next time you're worried or afraid of something, whether it's a test coming up at school, or what the school year might look like, or perhaps you're nervous about a dentist appointment or a doctor appointment, or you're nervous about a sleepover with a friend, whatever it might be that you're feeling a little bit afraid about, know that Jesus is saying to you, come with me and we can do it together. 
and I won't let you sink into the waters. You and I will walk together through this amazing creation. And friends, I want to invite you, just like Owen and I are doing, get out and enjoy God's great, great, big, beautiful world sometime. Let's say a quick prayer together before we wrap up our time. Good and gracious God, we love you. Thank you, God, for your beautiful creation. Thank you, God, for walking with us even in the scary times. And thank you, God, for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And God, I give you thanks for all of our amazing young disciples. We pray all these things and so much more in your son's wonderful name. Amen. been thinking I was sailing, I'm not sleeping, and I'm flailing at this journey of me. All of this point was contemplating, and now everybody's saying I'm adrift on the sea. Lord, you know for what I'm asking, why won't you show compassion and just give it to me? I know you heard what I want. You agitated cause you waited and you waited but I couldn't let go You see I want a great big hole in the mainsail of my soul that I need you to sow And by you granting me this favor I thought it would make me braver than a worried fool I trust you know what I mean I guess you know me indeed I'll hand the rudder to you There's nothing else I can do my brain and all this worry in vain I'll hand the rudder to you well, I'll hand it over to you There's something I have to do I'm tired of feeling the pain This boat is circling the drain I'll hand the rudder to you
verses 22 through 33. Let us listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Every year, on the night before the first day of school, from the time I started public school at age four, I would go to bed with an upset tummy. When I was little, I always thought I was sick, but as I, mat as I matured, realized that my upset stomach was directly related to my nerves. Who would be in my class? Would my teachers be gentle and kind or direct and seem cold? In elementary school, one thing that brought me great comfort was knowing my favorite lunch lady who also happened to be a member of the church my dad served, would be in the cafeteria at lunchtime. I loved her for many reasons. Her kind and gentle spirit, her sweet laugh, and the fact that she actually engaged in conversation with the children, making each one feel important. This definitely gave her the street credit she deserved. She affectionately called me Ladybug. In fact, she still calls me Ladybug till this day. This always made me smile and feel special. In fact, it wasn't until just a couple years ago when she confessed to me that she nicknamed all the girls Ladybug. 
and yet I still feel special. Knowing there was someone at school who I knew and loved offered peace and helped me to step out year after year and get through those nerve wracking first days of elementary school. An added bonus was that the school lunches were actually pretty delicious back when I was a kid. Stepping out in faith can be a big hurdle to jump. If you missed Luann Carabell's first midweek reflection, Overcoming Fear, on July 22nd, I encourage you to go to the archives on our website and watch it. Luann cites Dietrich Bonhoeffer's sermon based on our passage for today, but she takes it a step further and boldly addresses and challenges the issue of fear, acknowledging that it is a very real part of the human condition, and posed the difficult question that when faced with overwhelming danger, is it possible to feel completely unafraid? Sometimes our fears get the best of us. It happened to the disciples. They were sailing across the lake when a terrible storm arose. They were fishermen by trade. They had experienced many such storms. They were strong people, but when the storm showed no sign of letting up, it got the better of them. They feared for their very lives. Then across the water, they saw Jesus. In times of panic, sometimes our minds run wild. The disciples failed to recognize Christ and they cried out in fear, it is a ghost. In the groggy in-between state of sleep and waking, the disciples are surprised. Well, more like startled to see a figure coming at them across the water. They can't make out who is coming toward them in spite of the fact that it is their friend and teacher, Jesus, with whom, by the way, they had been traveling with for months by this point. So what is preventing them from recognizing him. For that matter, what prevents us from recognizing God's presence among us? We are told later on in the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel that Jesus seeks us and is present with us even to the end of the age. However, if we're honest, there are things that can really cloud our vision and create distractions and prevent us from recognizing moments of God's grace that surround us. In some ways we have expectations or maybe more like limitations of where we encounter God. In the sanctuary on Sunday morning or the food pantry or soup kitchen but do we imagine how God's presence could meet us on an afternoon walk or hike or working in the yard or cleaning the house or doing laundry? Where is God's presence in the midst of social and political unrest in a nation that has prided itself on freedom while shadows of hatred, oppression, and systemic racism lurk? Where is God in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic? Friends, our God is one who comes to us during stormy, groggy, unpredicted hours in unusual walking on water ways. Always patient, always compassionate, never predictable. And when Jesus' presence is far out of the ordinary from what they expect, their minds run wild. But Jesus speak words of comfort to his fearful disciples. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. What beautiful words for the, fear, for the fearful heart, it is I. 
there is comfort and it is good news. Indeed, that in our moments of distress, that Jesus comes. When the storms of life are raging, when all of life seems out of control, when we feel totally helpless, Jesus comes. That's our first bit of good news this morning. He comes. It seems to be a common aspect of the human experience that our fears and superstitions blind us to the arrival and presence of the holy. In the same way, it seems to be central and a blessed aspect of the character of God is that it is one that stands ready with a word of comfort and calm to soothe us. As Peter watched as Jesus walked across the water, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Faith was beginning to stir in Simon Peter. He was starting to believe that he could do the things that Jesus called him to do. He was willing to step out of the boat. All Jesus said was, come and Peter took that first step. To his great surprise, he did not sink. For Peter, this moment unlocked something very real for him. It was a moment of revelation. It was revealed to him just how limitless the Son of God really is. Peter, like most of us, needed just a bit more reassurance that he was actually encountering the divine, that his mind was not playing tricks on him. For us, this is a powerful witness of our humanity and a faith that needs reassurance and all that God needs to be able to call us to amazing feats of grace. All Jesus says is come, and Peter is off and running. It's all he needed. And just for a moment, his faith was stronger than his doubt, and he was able to step out in faith. When the world around us seems to be in disarray, when our burdens become so heavy, when the waters are stormy and rough, when we are confused about what is truth and what is not, when we feel like we are in over our heads and cry out with Peter, Lord, save us. Remember this, Jesus is so close that he's reaching out his hand to help steady us. Because here in this world, even and especially in times of foggy uncertainty and stormy waters, the human and the divine are entwined, working together, enabling us so that we can step out in faith to be the body of Christ in the world. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Summer break is almost over. School is just around the corner and over the next several weeks, congregations all around the country will be blessing pencils, pens, erasers, sharpies, calculators, tablets, glue sticks, computers, the internet, and backpacks. In years past, the church has call, called this the blessing of the backpacks. But this year is different. Some children, youth, and adults will be returning to school campuses, while other children, youth, and adults will be conducting and attending school online. So today we will offer a back to school blessing for teachers, administrators, professors, and of course for the students. If you are worshiping with a student or students, teachers, bus drivers, professors, administrators, or school staff at home, I invite you to hold your hands, to hold hands with them or place a hand on their shoulder or head. 
but everyone is invited to join me by raising your hands up high in the ancient posture of blessing. Now imagine all the love, support, and encouragement pouring out of you from the tips of your toes to the top of your head and out through your fingertips and to all those beginning a new year of learning, of growing, and getting to know a little better God's Sophia, that is God's holy wisdom. Now let us pray. Loving God, be with these people, students, teachers, paraprofessionals, administrators, professors, custodians, guidance counselors, bus drivers, social workers, librarians, cafeteria workers, and all school staff. Be with them and help them as they begin a new year of learning, teaching, growing, and serving. May their minds and their pencils be sharp. May their food provide nourishment. And may their pink pearl erasers help them to remember that mistakes are okay. In fact, they are the most important part of the process that we call learning. God, thank you for glue sticks and homework folders, tablets and laptops and crisp new notebooks waiting to be filled. Thank you for schools and libraries and teachers. Thank you for the internet and the ability to conduct school in person and online. Thank you for the gift of curiosity and for your wisdom that is all around us. God of wisdom, Bless the backpacks, bless the technology, the school campuses, and the learning spaces at home. We pray this and everything in the name of your son who left his parents so he could sit and learn at the feet of those rabbis in the temple. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
leave me where my trust is without borders. Let me rock upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could have ever wandered. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Christ has freely given us the gift of grace and salvation. Let us therefore freely bring our generous gifts of gratitude to him. Let us pray the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, you call us to let go of the things that we cling to and step out in faith, trusting in your love and provision. Give us, to, give us courage to step out boldly and sufficient faith to follow. Take our lives and our gifts. Use them to accomplish more than we could possibly imagine so that through us your kingdom might come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Beloved, in the baptismal promise, we are called to pray for one another. We're called to pray for the church and we are also called to pray for the world. We do this because 
We are Christ's body living and breathing in the world. We do this because God so loved the world. And we do this because Christ prays for us. And so this week in our joys, let us celebrate with Carolyn and her mother Dorothy who celebrated her 101st birthday on Thursday, July 30th. What a milestone. Congratulations and blessings. In our concerns, we continue to pray for the frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, our grocery store workers, our truck drivers. We pray for hospital workers and for so many people who are having to engage the world every day. We pray for those who are sick and for those who are grieving. Let us pray. God, you have called us to be a people of prayer, to continue the ministry of intercession handed on to us by Jesus Christ himself. And so we come before you with confidence bringing our prayers for the world you love, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, like Jesus' disciples, find themselves surrounded by high winds and stormy seas, those who feel overwhelmed by events and circumstances, whether it be the loss of a job, the death of a loved one, serious accident or illness, chronic pain, depression, or divorce, and who don't know where to turn. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who, like Joseph, find themselves deeply wounded by people they love, people they thought they knew and trusted, and who are struggling to know how to respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, like Peter, are experiencing a crisis of faith, who long to wholeheartedly trust in God, but are held back by questions and doubts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, like the prophet Elijah, have fallen into despair who have begun to doubt God's presence and power or questions God's call in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who, like Joseph, have had their hopes and dreams crushed, those whose lives have suddenly taken a different turn and who now wonder what lies ahead for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, it is not your will that any should suffer. We offer our prayers for all those who hunger and thirst, those who live in the midst of violence or poverty, and those who feel abandoned or ignored by the world around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our honor. prayer. Through the life-giving power of your Holy Spirit, make your sustaining presence known to all who are in pain or need so that they too may know your love and live. These things we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen Oh! 
We all face stormy, troubled waters in our lifetime. There will always be times when we are afraid. It's part of our humanity. And when we encounter those times and we struggle to step out in faith, remember that Christ is there waiting for you with his arms extended ready to steady you and to guide you and to comfort you as you go about this day and in the days ahead may the love of god the grace of our lord jesus christ and the communion of the holy spirit be with you now and forevermore amen